Alongside Tigers radio play-by-play announcer Dan Dickerson, I'm Jason Ross Jr. Dan, well, first off, thank you for coming on today. We really appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Love it. Always like talking baseball with you guys. Always love talking baseball with you, Dan. I want to start off by talking about today's pitching matchup. We have Boyd, who went into the eighth inning the last time he played Kansas City. But behind him, the bullpen arms, that's where the question mark has been so far this year. If there's anything that has stood out to you when it comes to what could improve, what is that out of the bullpen? I think some guys just getting back to where they've been in the past. Daniel Norris hasn't been quite himself yet. We know it's in there, but the velocity's been down a little bit. But that I think the velocity helps him, especially a bit when you think the changeup is a big pitch for him. And the slider just doesn't seem to have that same bite. So for, for fans, I think you'll watch to see if that velocity is 93, 94 sometime in the near future. It's in there. We know it is. But he's a key piece in that bullpen. Cisnero and Soto, they're, they're concentrating on having them throw more strikes. There's, there's been more contact, which is kind of interesting, but they also both have a lot of strikeouts. But we just need to see, there's been a lot of traffic on the base pass with the, the Tigers relievers. But there are guys in that bullpen who have track records of not allowing many base runners. The walks are a huge part of it. That has to be like step one for the back end of the bullpen. A.J. does think that having that day off Sunday, the rain out, with the day off Monday really helped this bullpen in terms of getting everybody freshened up. They're getting a little bit taxed. They're having to watch some guys. Everybody should be good to go. But it, it has to turn around. You're right. It, it's the biggest, single biggest thing going on with this team right now in terms of what has to get better. It's the bullpen. And then, Dan, offensively for Detroit, Tigers have scored at least five runs in four out of their past five games. That came after quite the dry spell offensively in April and the early stages of May. What do you feel have been the keys to success to at least turning things around a bit offensively of late? I think it's just that consistent approach that A.J. Hinch and Scott Coolball have been preaching to these guys. You've got to stay in the strike zone. We're going to you know, really try to get this game plan down. Of course, you've had a game plan every game of the year, but they're sticking to the game plan a little bit better. But it's, it's one thing to say, hey, stay in the strike zone better. Don't strike out so much. You know, that doesn't work in terms of turning things around. But just working on it, constantly thinking about it. Like Nico Goodrum the other day, two two two-strike hits. He had six two-strike hits all year. He had two the other day because he's really been working with Scott Coolball on trying to zone in on a particular part of the plate and then make that contact in two strikes. It's not a simple process. But they've averaged 16 base runners a game the last five games. They averaged seven the previous 17. Yeah. And Dan, my final question for you, kind of looking ahead to the future and looking back at the past, Tigers fans love to think about how bright the future could be. You and I just talked about the Whitecaps getting their home opener underway today, Spencer Torkelson playing there, but they also love to harken back to the past and think of some of the better moments in Tigers history. For you, as the Tigers radio play-by-play announcer throughout your career, thinking back, is there any moment that stands out to you that if you could go back to today and relive, what would that be? Oh my God. One? Yeah, just, just one. one. Just one. Uh, I, I, some of them, of course, you go to the postseason immediately, and I, I think everybody would probably think of the Maglio moment, and believe me, that was amazing. But there were some games on the road. The Tigers won three game fives on the road in three consecutive years, twice in Oakland, once in New York. Those were amazing games, and I think of that Justin Verlander game in Oakland where he went nine to close it out, game five being the deciding game, you know, best of five series. Those are incredible moments because those crowds in Oakland were electric. They took the tarps off in the upper deck. You know, they always had the upper deck closed because, you know, nobody ever goes up there. They took the tarps off. It was 45,000. It was loud. Those were fun games. So there's probably a few other playoff games. I mean, again, that Maglio walk-off, just the joy around this ballpark that just seemed to, the party seemed to go on into the wee hours of the morning. That's a night I'll, I'll never forget. But uh, th- those post game or those uh, game fives on the road were always impressive to me. Very cool moments. Very fond memories. Thank you, Dan, again for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Good luck with your Absolutely. call today. Anytime, you guys. <laughs>